If you've ever felt like you're trying to do everything right, buying organic, choosing clean brands, reading every label, yet toxins are still slipping through, you are not alone. I'm a toxicologist and a mom, and I've been exactly where you are, trying to protect your kids without going crazy over every single ingredient. The truth is some of the worst hormone disruptors are hiding in products that look totally safe. They don't smell, they don't warn you, and worse yet, they're not even on the label, but they're also not your fault. In this video, I'll walk you through five everyday places these chemicals sneak in and share the easy swaps I personally use at home. Because protecting your family shouldn't feel overwhelming, it should feel empowering. Your child eats, drinks, and breathes more than you do, pound for pound, which means they also absorb more of what's in their environment than you do. The good and the bad. And here's the part that's even more critical. Children's bodies aren't just smaller versions of ours. They're actively building the systems that will carry them for the rest of their lives. And their hormone networks are wiring in real time. Their detox organs are still maturing. And their brains are developing at a pace that never happens again in human life. That's why endocrine disrupting chemicals or EDCs pose such a unique risk during childhood. These aren't rare toxins anymore and some are even called everywhere chemicals. They're in products that most of us have right now, from shampoo, plastic containers, to furniture, school uniforms, and even food wrappers. Let me show you what the science says. You might notice mood and behavior challenges in your children, since early exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals like PCBs and BPA is linked to altered brain development and increased risk of ADHD. A major issue is early puberty, Girls who are exposed to phthalates, parabens, and certain pesticides are hitting puberty earlier, sometimes years ahead of past generations. This can shift the window of fertility such that starting puberty early could mean earlier menopause. Then there are fertility issues. Since childhood exposure to BPA and phthalates is tied and linked to reduced sperm quality in boys and altered ovarian function in girls. And of course, there's cancer risk, since some hormone disruptors increase the risk of breast and testicular cancer, especially when exposure happens during key developmental windows, such as during pregnancy and shortly after birth. These effects don't show up the same way in boys and girls. For girls, there is earlier breast development, such as signs of puberty in girls ages as young as seven years old and an increased lifetime risk of reproductive cancers. For boys, disrupted genital development, reduced testosterone and fertility risks later in life are associated with endocrine disruptor exposure. But here's the good news. Once you learn what I'm about to share with you, you'll realize that some of these swaps are really easy to make and you can do them right now today. Not long ago, a close friend of mine called me in tears because she found out that her seven-year-old daughter started showing signs of puberty, like pubic hair development, well before the age that pediatricians considered normal, which is eight years old. She was absolutely beside herself and heartbroken. She felt betrayed by the brands that she trusted because the label said gentle, natural, and plant-based. So she thought she was making the right decisions by buying these clean baby shampoos, organic snacks, and even filtering her water. But when we decoded the ingredient labels, we found multiple sources of hormone disruptors, including synthetic undisclosed fragrance. And that's when things clicked for her because it wasn't just about the shampoo. It was about her daughter's development, her hormones, and her future. She didn't just toss a few products. She changed how she saw everything that came into her home. And here's the truth. This isn't rare anymore. It's just rarely recognized. And unfortunately, oftentimes it's too late. So if you've ever stood in the baby aisle debating between two bottles of shampoo, then this story is for you. Here are the top five hidden toxins in your child's life and what to use instead. Number one, BPA and phthalates found in plastics and packaging. We're starting out with two of the most heavily studied and still shockingly common hormone disruptors, bisphenol A or BPA and phthalates. These chemicals show up in places that many parents would never suspect. Plastic water bottles in your child's backpack, reusable lunch containers, canned foods, and even soft squishy toys that give off that new plastic smell. Those are everywhere nowadays and my kids always come home with them. People at school are giving it to them, but unfortunately, they don't spend much time in our house. 
But here's the real concern and real danger. BPA and phthalates are endocrine disruptors, which means they hijack your child's hormonal system during the most sensitive years of their development. In children specifically, they can mimic estrogen, throwing off the delicate hormone balance that shapes everything from the timing of puberty to reproductive organ development. And here's what the research shows. Studies have found strong links between BPA and phthalate exposure and early puberty in girls, which includes earlier breast development and hormone shifts. In boys, early life exposure to these chemicals is associated with altered testosterone levels and abnormal genital development, such that boys have a shortened anogenital distance, which indicates feminization. One study showed that even low level exposure before puberty can alter its timing, either speeding it up or delaying it. And again, sadly, this is not rare anymore. We're seeing this play out on a population level. We're seeing trends worldwide with these chemicals. But here's the empowering part. This is not about ditching every single plastic in your house. It's about upgrading a few high impact items that touch your child's food and drinks. Let's go over a few swap suggestions. Choose stainless steel or glass for water bottles and lunch containers. They're safer, last longer, and cut exposure significantly. Try to limit canned food consumption when you can, of course, and offer BPA-free third-party certified brands when you can. But just be aware that those are also not perfect. But again, just do your best. I personally cut back on beans because I found that they were always packaged in cans until recently. I actually found beans in glass jars. Yes, of course they cost more, but the peace of mind knowing I'm not increasing my toxic load or my children's is worth it. And if that's out of budget, you can simply buy dried beans soak and then cook them. Second, skip soft plastic toys, especially anything labeled PVC or that smells strongly synthetic. And I can tell you that a lot of kids that are around my children's age love blind boxes. And what I've noticed is that almost every single one of the toys in those blind boxes, of course, is not just plastic, but PVC. PVC plastic is known to release phthalates. So just be careful with the toys that you're giving your kids. And remember, BPA-free doesn't mean endocrine disruptor or phthalate-free. Since BPA has been replaced with its cousins, BPS and BPF, which act just the same way in the body. The key takeaway is to avoid plastics and cans as much as possible, but don't go crazy. That's something that is really important to remember. Another one is synthetic fragrance. This is often found in personal care and cleaning products. If you check the label, look for the words fragrance or parfum. They might sound innocent, but on a label, it's literally one of the biggest red flags for hidden toxins, especially for kids, that you can easily spot. That single word can legally contain hundreds of undisclosed chemicals, many of which are linked to hormone disruption, asthma, and neurological changes in addition to skin issues. And because of trade secret loopholes in the regulations, companies do not have to tell us what's actually inside their fragrance mixture. And the worst part is that these mystery chemicals show up in the most trusted places like baby wipes, diaper creams and lotions, shampoos and soaps, laundry detergent, air fresheners and fabric sprays, and even gentle or clean or even baby safe products often rely on synthetic undisclosed fragrance chemicals that are hiding all sorts of diabolical players like phthalates. Here's what the science says. A 2024 review of nearly 400 children's products found that 74% contained parfum, including 90% of shampoos and wipes. And many of these were linked to hormonal shifts and respiratory symptoms. Several fragrance ingredients are now classified as carcinogens, neurotoxins, and endocrine disruptors, which are all dangerous for a child's still developing body. I have no idea why fragrances are used in kids' products and I think they should be outlawed. Phthalates like DEHP and BBP are often hidden in fragrances. These are linked to asthma and allergy risk in children. And early phthalate exposure has been shown to affect attention, learning, and memory. Here are swap suggestions for avoiding fragrance. Go fragrance-free and unscented wherever you can, especially for anything that touches your child's skin or lingers in the air they breathe. But if you absolutely love scents, 
I would personally go for 100% essential oil based products from brands that will actually disclose every single ingredient. But this isn't for everyone. So make sure you read the ingredients list and check to make sure that you're not going to form a reaction from them. And remember to flip the bottle. If it says fragrance or parfum without full transparency, that is your cue to skip it. Marketing terms like clean or eco-friendly are not regulated, but the choices you make can be since it's 100% in your control which products you choose. And think of it like this. You didn't just swap out a shampoo. You are protecting your child's hormones and their breathing, which is huge. And number three are flame retardants. This can be found in pajamas, furniture, and baby gear. And this one shocks a lot of parents because flame resistant sounds safe, doesn't it? But the chemicals that are used to achieve that flame resistant or flame retardant label, especially brominated flame retardants and organophosphates can seriously disrupt thyroid function, which affects your child's brain, metabolism, growth, and focus. In fact, the European Union banned them in 2008, but some are still allowed in US products. And these flame retardants are still found in pajamas that are labeled flame resistant, crib mattresses and baby gear, car seats, and foam furniture like couches and gliders that a lot of us have in the nursery. And you won't see these chemicals on the label, but they are there. And here's what the science shows. Flame retardants interfere with hormone, thyroid hormone signaling, especially dangerous during a child's brain development. PBDE, a type of flame retardant, exposure to this chemical in early childhood is linked to altered TSH and T3 levels, which play key roles in focus and cognition. Other studies link early exposure to lower IQ, feelings of unhappiness and anxiety, and more hyperactivity in school-aged kids. Even animal studies confirm thyroid changes and gene expression disruptions after exposure to these flame retardants. And here's the takeaway. This is not just about a mattress tag. It's actually about your child's cognition, their health, and their hormonal wiring. So here are a few swap suggestions. Look for GOTS certified organic pajamas that are labeled with no flame retardants. You'll often see them with a big yellow tag that indicates they are not treated with flame retardants. And I've even seen affordable options at Target like Burt's Bees organic pajamas. When buying mattresses or upholstered furniture, look for no added flame retardants or meets flammability standards without chemicals. If you can't replace something yet, consider using a tightly woven barrier cover to vacuum frequently with a HEPA filter to reduce the accumulation of toxic dust particles because unfortunately a lot of these chemicals will bind to the dust in our homes. So be sure to stay on top of it and try to keep dust to a minimum in your home. And remember, you didn't just swap out pajamas. You are supporting your child's thyroid, attention, and brain development, which matters a whole lot. Number four, pesticide residues in conventional produce and snacks. This one builds up quietly through the foods that your children are eating every day. Certain pesticides, especially like organophosphates and pyrethroids, are endocrine disruptors. They interfere with thyroid function. They can even mimic estrogen. So they're acting like a fake estrogen and may impact the nervous system in subtle but lasting ways since a lot of these pesticides and herbicides are also neurotoxic. And here are some of the biggest culprits, non-organic strawberries, apples, spinach, and grapes. I'll never forget one of the first things I learned in toxicology class was how some strawberries, if you ever see them being grown underneath tarps, they're actually spraying chemicals underneath those tarps to artificially ripen them or to hasten or speed up the rate of ripening so that they can sell more and make more money. Unfortunately, that happens all the time. So definitely, if you can, avoid conventional strawberries in particular. Packaged snacks that are made from conventional soy, corn, or wheat. Refined grains with post-harvest chemical residues like glyphosate, which ends up on wheat and oats. And here is what the science says. Early life pesticide exposure is linked to thyroid disruption and of course, neurotoxicity. Epidemiological evidence actually shows associations between parental use of pesticides, um, particularly insecticides, with acute lymphocytic leukemia and brain tumors. 
and cohort studies link early life exposures to organophosphates and organochlorine pesticides, primarily DDT, with adverse effects on neurodevelopment and behavior. Kids eat more food relative to their body weight and have immature detox systems. This makes them especially vulnerable to foodborne toxins and chemicals. Another study confirmed even organic versus non-organic diets cause significant reductions in some insecticide and herbicides in children. So eating organic results in less exposure to these insecticides and herbicides. And here are some swap suggestions. Prioritize organic versions of the EWG Dirty Dozen, which are the most pesticide contaminated produce. I also follow the EWG's Clean 15 list to know which conventional produce had the least amount of pesticides so I don't have to buy those organic and save money. And always, always wash your produce thoroughly, even if it's organic. Try soaking fruits and veggies in two teaspoons of baking soda for every four cups of water for about 15 minutes. This has been shown to remove more pesticides than rinsing alone. But even that, washing can actually remove up to 76% of pesticide residues and peeling can eliminate those that penetrate into the skin. However, that can remove some of the nutrients that are in those fruits, but at least you're not getting the pesticides. Another suggestion is to remove the outer leaves of veggies like lettuce, cabbage, and kale. And remember that you didn't just wash an apple or remove some of the pesticides. You are actually reducing hormone disruption and protecting your child's brain and nervous system development, which is absolutely massive. Number five, PFAS forever chemicals. These chemicals are everywhere and they are designed not to leave, which is why they're known as forever chemicals because they accumulate in our bodies, they take forever to break down, and we're exposed continuously, and they are literally everywhere. They're in the environment. They've been, even been found in polar bear fat, having moved all the way up the food chain. And now they're showing up in places like tap water, microwave popcorn bags, and fast food containers, stain-resistant school uniforms, rain gear, and yoga pants, nonstick pans, and treated upholstery. Remember that these are not inert and PFAS are biologically active and extremely disruptive to your child's hormonal and immune system. Data indicates an association between elevated PFOA and overweight or obese children. Prenatal PFAS exposure is linked to lower birth weight and potential fetal developmental impacts. PFAS also disrupt thyroid signaling and sex hormone regulation, which affects growth, metabolism, and the timing of puberty. Here is a swap suggestion for this. Invest in a reverse osmosis or carbon block filter for your water for cooking and drinking. This is one of the most powerful and affordable swaps that you can make. Choose PFAS free uniforms and rain gear. Avoid labels like stain resistant, water repellent, or sweat wicking. And reduce fast food and packaged snack consumption. Instead, cook more food at home from whole ingredients where you can control the ingredients and the packaging, how you store it and how you eat it. And remember that you didn't just swap out a jacket or just filter your water. You are supporting your child's immunity, hormones and lifelong health. So the next bottle of shampoo that you buy, the next snack that you pack in your kid's lunchbox, the next fabric that touches your child's skin, it can either help protect their hormones or quietly disrupt them. But now you know how to tell the difference. And I'm so curious. Let me know what is the first product that you are swapping out after you watch this video. Go ahead and drop it in the comments because your decision might inspire another person, another parent to take their first step too. Because that first swap isn't inconsequential. It isn't small. It is a huge step in you taking control. And it's the beginning of a home and a future where your child's hormones are protected and not being hijacked by these chemicals. You don't have to figure this out all alone because I've done the deep digging. I've tested so many products. I've made so many mistakes so that you don't have to. And that's what I'm sharing on this channel. And remember that you got this and you are not alone. I'm 100% behind you and I'll see you on the next video.